you to take a picture of them where their face is showing. It's just, it's just part of their beliefs. I won't go into all of it, but you know, it's just a courtesy thing that we tell people. Like, you could take a picture of a buggy going by, but they don't want you to stand up beside them and say, "Would you take a selfie with me?" You know, that type of thing. Now, I think it'll be interesting to see as we go longer in in time whether that will change. You know, because selfies have become you know such a big thing. But yeah, they they there are restaurants, there are. Um, roadside stands i mean you drive everywhere and there'll just be a stand and there'll be homemade cherry pies and apple pies and you know they they're known for not only their food they're big craftsmen so there's all kinds of woodworking and then they're also big needle workers you'll go by a place and there literally there'll be like 50 quilts on a a, a clothesline i'm not even sure that kids know what clotheslines are nowadays but um that they sell so they yeah they're they're a very, a very kind people. It does appeal to me, but then I get bored for five minutes. I've got to get my phone out. Again. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Cleveland said the, the whole the rock, rock, rock and roll hall of fame. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else to see and do there, or is it just that one thing? Oh no, there's you know there's all types of things to do. There's a there's history museums, there's art museums. You know they it's Cleveland's a big city, mm-hmm. um, you know, and it's it's kind of in the limelight right now because it happens to be where the Republican National Convention is going to be held in a few months. So they're they're all over the news in the United States. Uh, but yeah, there's all types of uh, museums um, and culture there in in Cleveland itself. You can follow me on Twitter at holiday underscore hut. If you visited one of the Great Lakes states and you have some pictures you want to share, please post them at facebook.com slash Show. You can use the same Facebook page to post any tips and recommendations you have for those who want to stay in the area. Still to come, we're going to find out what you need to know about visiting Michigan. But at the moment, we're still talking about the Great Lakes. And if you're a regular listener, you know that I struggle with words. But here's another one. Here's another of the states that make up the Great Lakes region, and it's another place which I struggle to pronounce. Another one of the states in the region is, uh, I'm about to pronounce this wrong, Wisconsin? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. Uh, Mm -hmm. Which two of the Great Lakes are there? Uh, They set on Superior, and they set on Michigan. Uh, Wisconsin, actually, there's different debates as to where it got its name, Mm -hmm. but... uh, I think there was, uh, I, re- I read a political paper, it was back in the 1900s, that they named it after there was a river there that was Wisconsin, which was W-E, that's all Indian words, mm-hmm. you know, American Indian words, we Wisconsin, and that's, it was the Wisconsin River that actually then the, the state was named after, uh, but great 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 outdoor uh states uh lots to do and see milwaukee is their primary city there um and probably the number one thing there is that's where harley davidson is from so the harley davidson museum is there uh, it actually it's very interesting whether you're into motorcycles or not uh the museum takes the motorcycle and they actually tell american history how the harley davidson like harley davidson's um, used to be exclusively used by the mail carriers in the United States. They used to deliver mail. Um, there was a, a troop in the army that, you know, there's the cavalry that, you know, they were on horses. Well, there was also a cavalry type troop that they all rode Harley Davidson. So it's a really neat museum in that it tells how Harleys made an impact uh, on American history. One of my new neighbours has got his own Sons of Anarchy Harley. So oh, really? Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. He's got all the kit on and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was looking at doing research, I just completely forgot about Harley. Being an ex-biker myself, it's a big slab on the Yeah, list. yeah. The manu- the man- they're manufactured there as well as the museums there. And they have um, they have bike nights. I mean, there are I mean, hundreds and hundreds of motorcycles there. They have the very first Harley, you know, mm-hmm. that was invented. And they have one from every year. You know, so it's... Uh, they have like uh, one display is nothing but but the engines from every year, so it's it's a really neat display. And you bike yourself? I was when I was younger. I'm not now. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on a motorbike though. <laughs> I don't have the knees for it anymore. I think if I come to traffic lights, I just go full over on my side. Yeah, yeah. 
it's not just Harley Davidson in Milwaukee, it's a happy days as well. It is. The Fonz, yes. The, the, the Fonz statue is there. It's a, there's a bronze statue of him. Yeah, you see this huge line because everyone's lined up to get their picture taken uh, with the Fonz. Yeah, so that's where that's where Happy Days uh, mm-hmm. was originating from. I watched it a lot when I was a kid, so I can go and have my picture next to this. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah, yeah. Something for me to do on top of that. I'll never get my wife in the Harley Museum, but I might get it next to the. There you go. Museum. There. Well, she could do some shopping too, or <laughs> they have tons of festivals. There's events that go there all all year long it, throughout the entire region. You know, we festivals are one of those things that we don't necessarily promote per se because mm-hmm. they, you know, they're not long term uh, type of events. But I would say in the summertime, well, really spring, summer, and fall. You can be almost anywhere in our entire region, and there's some type of festival going on wherever you're going to be. Uh, So there's a lot of activities, and that's where you really get to see the local flavor. You know, whether it's a a local corn festival or um, the local, most people don't know this, uh, Wisconsin is one of the largest producers of ginseng in the world. Mm-hmm. They have huge ginseng, so there's a ginseng festival. There's there's all types of festivals throughout the entire region. I did not know that. So. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they export it to like China and all <laughs> the different places. Then they use it to to make into products. Yeah. You see, you don't really promote festivals because they're not long term things. But are there any annual events, whatever, however weird they might be, that have a long history? Yeah, sure. Um, well, Milwaukee is a perfect example. They have Summerfest. It's one of the largest music festivals in the United States, mm-hmm. uh, and they have entertainment. I mean, it's it's not just they have the local bands, but they also have, you know, big name entertainment. Um, Sting is going to be there this year. Paul McCartney is going to be there, mm-hmm. um, and then you have like cities of Chicago, that. They have their annual festivals that are the same time. They have a blues festival, they have a jazz festival, they have a country music festival. Um, so, and they're all free. Mm-hmm. They don't cost anything to go to these festivals. Um, if you go up into Minnesota, they have the Bob Dylan Festival because that's where Bob Dylan is from in Hibbing. So there, there are music festivals and food-related festivals and flower festivals. And we just had uh, the Tulip Festival in Holland. Holland is in Michigan, Holland, Michigan, and they do a tulip festival every year. So it's it's not that I don't think anyone necessarily plans a trip to come to a particular festival, mm-hmm. but it's great because when they do travel, there is some kind of festival going on everywhere. You know, it's kind of like golfing. Um, I don't know that UK people necessarily come to our region um, just to golf, but if they're golfers, they always golf when they come to the region because there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of public golf courses that they can go to and they're not expensive and when you think about you know golfing in the summertime let's see you could be in florida or arizona or texas and in the summer it's probably 100 or 105 degrees or you can be golfing in ohio or michigan and it's 80 you know so it's a lot more comfortable to be in our region golfing Mm -hmm. in the summer than going to the hot destinations my friend's just Facebook this morning. He's off to Portugal to golf. I'll have oh, to really? have a word of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just say everybody goes to Portugal. You need to go further. Yeah, there. I mean, we've been actually for golfing. We've been very fortunate because um, you know everyone knows the Ryder Cup, mm-hmm. and uh, the last Ryder Cup that was in the United States was in Chicago, the Chicago Land area. Uh, the Ryder Cup this year that will be in September uh, is in Minnesota and Hazleton. And then when it comes back to the United States, it'll be in Whistling Straits in Wisconsin. So we've had three, the three of the last Ryder Cups right in our region. We kind of coin ourselves as Ryder Cup country. <laughs> Must upset a lot of people when they do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who's going to win? Have no idea, no clue, not going to say. <laughs> U.S. <laughs> You can keep up to date with travel news and leave me a message at facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. Still to come on the show, I'll talk food in Michigan with Dave Lorenz, who's the Vice President of Travel Michigan. Yes, I always get food into my conversations. I like food, what can I say? But at the moment I'm still speaking about the Great Lakes and a couple of the states with Toby McCarrick, the Executive Director of Great Lakes USA. While researching questions for this, I come across something called a circle tour of uh, the lakes. I wanted to know more about it, so that's what Toby's going to be explaining now. 
getting back to Lake Superior and activities, mm -hmm. I saw there's something called a circle tour. What's mm -hmm. that? Actually, it's not just Lake Superior. Every one of the lakes have uh, what we call circle tours. So there's the Circle Lake Michigan tour, Circle Lake Huron, Circle Ontario tour, Circle Superior tour. Um, they are marked routes going all the way around each of the lakes. Mm -hmm. um, and they're very popular. Um, actually, it's probably one of the biggest products that's carried in the UK is the Circle Lake Michigan tour. Well, they'll fly into Chicago and they'll literally go all around the lake and then back out. Um, but it's primarily because the views are beautiful and they're very distinct. You might be on the eastern side of Lake Michigan, and which is all sand dunes, uh, and you can be in the northern part where, say, around Traverse City, and you have sand dunes. They're not just little hills. These sand dunes are 400 feet, 125 meters tall. Or you might be going around the Circle Lake uh, Superior Tour, uh, say, just north of Duluth, and you're on 400-foot rocky um, drops that go down into the lake, and you're literally driving on top of that, you know, looking down at the lake. So... They're very, very scenic drives. Um, and it's not just the lakes. I mean, uh, the Mississippi River itself has the Great River Road that go, goes along the Mississippi River. Uh, so those scenic drives around the waterways, you know, are very, very popular driving tours. Question to put you on the spot. Oh, good. Here we go. You've already said earlier you need to spend a lot of time to make the most of it and keep coming back. So for a first-time visitor from the UK... Which lake should they base themselves on? Well, it, it, it really depends. Um, we kind of, when you have a region the size that we have, they'll either do the eastern side or they'll do the middle or they'll do the western side. I mean, they usually won't do the entire region. So maybe they will, uh, they'll fly into Chicago and they'll go through Wisconsin, over through Minnesota. And then they might fly out of uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Or they could come in Detroit, go through Ohio, Indiana, up through Illinois, fly out of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Or they can go to the top region where they go through the Upper Peninsula. Uh, people can actually go onto our website, which is greatlakesusa.co.uk. Mm -hmm. And we have about 15 different guides on there that gives information, you know, about what they can do and see. There's a tab on there uh, where they can click on it that lists the tour operators that sell product. And then there are also sample itineraries of what people can do and see. Um, and it's, it really depends on their interest because if they're, if they're into history and heritage, they might come into Chicago and go down to Springfield where they see Abraham Lincoln, go over to Ohio uh, where there are several presidents that are from. Or if they're in the music scene, uh, they might do the triangle where they come into Detroit, do Motown, go down to Cleveland and do Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, come over to Chicago and do the blues, you know, and then back to Detroit. So they're, the driving tours are really based on their interest. Um, but a normal trip is anywhere from 10 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can do a part of the region during that time. I mean, if you were to do the entire region, and there are some people that do it, you know, they take a full 21, 28 days, and you can do the region in that time. You need another vacation when you come back, though, wouldn't you? And you do, yes, because it, it is a lot of driving. Mm -hmm. But fortunately... Um, it's very easy driving. Uh, the roads are very good through the region. Um, and there's a lot to do and see. There's a lot of nature. I mean, it's probably one of the number one reasons people come into the region is the outdoor activities. Because uh, they can do anything from hiking to kayaking uh, to sailing, uh, fishing. You know, there's just a lot of... Everyone comes, of course, they see the urban areas. They mm -hmm. see the Minneapolis, St. Paul's, the Detroit's, the Chicago's. And they spend two or three days there. But then they rent a car and they get out and see, again, like kind of what I coin as the real America. Um, you know, you're driving along one of these two-lane highways and you see some Aunt Bee's Cafe. And you stop in there and you sit on the little red vinyl stool at the counter and you have a piece of homemade apple pie with ice cream. It's no different than when we come over here. And we want to have fish and chips. Mm -hmm. You know, people come over to our region and they want to do the Americana type things. So you're four blocks away. What would be the ideal day for you to spend by the lake? 
The ideal day for me, I have two. I happen to have two dogs, uh, okay. and literally, I can go straight down my street, and where my street ends at uh, Lake Michigan, there's a huge beach, mm-hmm. and I just go to the beach with my dogs, and we play frisbee and throw the ball. So that's that's a good day for me. Um, but it's it's nice.